Basketball fans, my name is Akil Agassiz, and according to my producers, I'm wearing an extremely tight shirt, but you are watching The Hangout, Canada's home for basketball talk. So I'm going to touching my socks. All right, so we've got a very, very special guest, the basketball expert, so it's about time we kick it off. Very special guest to my left, someone that you all grew up watching, one of the most well-informed, well-spoken, intelligent people. T-Rex, I'm not talking about you. I know. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Strabble, Apple, George yeah, Strabble, how are you? thank you so much for coming out. A pleasure to be here with you, man. People how are you? don't know you started as a Raptors reporter, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, I worked at the fan uh, in Toronto sports radio station and covered the NBA. I think when the Raptors first came to town, there were only two basketball fans who worked at that station, <laughs> and I was a kid who shouldn't have been a reporter, but it was Elliot Friedman, and it was me, and so they went, all right, well, go ahead. Awesome. And that's how, it, that's how it started. And now look where Elliot is, and now look where you are. You guys are doing great. We got lucky. Uh, <laughs> so did I, actually. Another guy still getting lucky on a day-to-day -day basis. One of my favorite people. Repping the OVO brand. He stole my special edition T-shirt. Of course I did. Because now I have none, but you got one. T-Rex, Tyrone Edwards. You guys know him and love him. Uh, member of the OVO team. Drake, your boy. Yes. He's got this city on fire right now. Nothing was the same. That's all you need to say, because you know that's true. And at the end of the couch, that's Dan Gladman. That's the producer of the Raptors broadcast. I just want to point out that usually I dominate the sneaker game on this show. I'd like to point out, these right here, folks, are my Jerry Stack houses. I thought I came with some heat. Guys, show them the, show them the heat. I got seriously upstaged today. First off, he came with the 11s, my right. favorite Jordans. Yep. Space Jams. Space Jams. Then we got the Christmas edition Iversons from Reebok over here. This is what the old man brings here. The winner. <laughs> oh, geez. AJ1 OGs. But, yeah. but here, if you're going to rock big sneakers, you got to ring big socks. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, so you got to fit that the whole Okay, way. enough. Now, okay, I got some great Canadians here <laughs> with me. We're talking basketball. We got to start with the man. Andrew Wiggins, you know him, you love him. Want to talk about Nick Wiggins from Vaughn? Yeah, we okay, go no, I got, yeah, I got yeah, love yeah, for Nick yeah, Wiggins yeah, too, yeah, yeah. but Andrew Wiggins was originally anticipated to be the number one overall draft pick in the upcoming NBA draft if he does declare after his freshman season. But the naysayers and the nitpickers are out there. You see the season averages. But the real question is, is Wiggins playing like a number one pick? You see the numbers of 16 a game, seven. His last game against number eight Iowa, 17 points, 19 rebounds, responding to the critics. Right. But Andrew Wiggins has had some single digit games, George. He's had some games where he didn't look dominant. And when you're drafting at the number one pick, especially looking at the last year, you want a dominant player at the number one pick. Sure. Is he playing number one? I don't think he's playing number one. I think he's playing number three. But here's the thing. I remember when all that talk came out about Wiggins being the number one pick and none of that came from him. Yep. Right? It was really early on for him and, and Wiggins knew that a top three pick really is as good as the number one pick for him, mm -hmm. is still really young. I don't know that he declares at the end of this year. If I'm him, I do another year. Wow. I, Seriously? Yeah, man. Do another year. So especially the Raptors can't draft first. You do, <laughs> you do, you do another okay. year, Okay. All right. Well, Tyrone, you've, I mean, you, you've seen a couple games. Um, you're very familiar with right. the kid. So are you surprised at all with the, the fact that some people were expected to completely dominate the game? But, I mean, we've seen guys like LeBron James who are number one picks who don't do it the same way Kobe and Jordan right. did it. But I, I think that uh, one thing I've learned over the years is that never to get caught up in the hype. So I never really did get caught up in the hype of him being number one. I don't care if he if he's number one because I know he's going to be a beast. And uh, so whether he goes one, two, three, yeah. or if he takes another year, all that is fine with me because as long as he ends up on the Raptors. But, uh, let, let me dream. Let me dream. I yeah. want him on the Raptors, and I want him. He's just going to come and be entertaining. Because, you know, when you get to the NBA, it becomes more of entertainment anyway. Yes. He's going to no sell tickets. No zone. He's going to, yeah, he's going to sell tickets, and he's going to, you know, give the highlights and whatnot. So, but look he'll at, show. Look at last year's number one. Last year's number one, not even going to be in the league, maybe. Okay, we'll right? okay save, right. save, right. save those right. thoughts, Dan. You're, you're around, man. You're, in the, you're at the arenas. You're talking to Leo and those guys. What are the thoughts going on around Andrew Wiggins? With the first pick in the 2014 NBA draft. The Utah Jazz. The Milwaukee Bucks, the Los <laughs> Angeles Lakers, I don't know who it is, select Andrew Wiggins out of the University of Kansas. For sure. Kansas University. Not Joel Embiid? No, they're taking Wiggins. You, you can look at the numbers. His averages for a college player, especially in a major program, are good. You look at the games that he's had against top 25 competition, that's when he steps up and plays his best. Florida, the Duke game, Iowa. recently against Iowa State. He's still getting better. Remember, they only play 30, 35 games a year, so there's still a growth spurt. Coming back next year, actually, I do like that idea, George, but I think that's going to depend on what happens in the tournament. Yeah. If they get to the Final Four, 
He's out. He's gone. He's gone. He is yeah. the number one pick by a landslide. But okay. if he doesn't get to the Final Four, I don't think it's a sure yeah. thing. And maybe he considers coming back. That not wouldn't be a terrible idea. Now, George, I hate that it'd be a disappointment if he doesn't go number one. I, I won't be disappointed because right. I'm going to look at the body of work for his career, and I think right. the kid's going to yeah. fall out. Yeah. Now, I know you want to probably talk about Dylan Ennis, mm -hmm. but we want to talk about Tyler Ennis because you're right. big on the brothers. But Tyler Ennis, originally everyone anticipated that the number one point guard in the NCAA would probably be Marcus Smart, but looking at the numbers, looking at the performance, looking at the fact that Syracuse is now 17-0, and undefeated right now, Tyler Ennis has surprised a lot of people. I don't know if he surprised the NBA scouts yet because he's kind of the more traditional run your team point guard. Right. But do you think the radar, the NBA radar is clicking for Tyler Ennis? 100%, 100%, yeah. because I think there's one thing that he does better than a lot of young kids when they're playing is yep. that when he gets things wrong, he quickly figures out why they're wrong and fixes them. So you don't see a lot of pattern of mistakes with him. Yes. And he's made some mistakes, but he adjusts pretty quickly, and that's what you need to do for, I think, scouts to go, he's coachable. He can work and he could be oh. a star. See, I'm going to pick up right from where he just said, he is coachable. He's a student of the game. He's, he's a basketball player. Well, he watched his dad and his brother, oh, right? So yeah. he was a part of it. And, and he's a part of, you know, like that basketball elite in terms of like just loving the game, studying the game, wanting to uh, to do better. He, you know, we're not worried about big egos and like all the other the extras for him. We're talking about a basketball player, which is like last of a dying breed right now. Once there you get a to a certain level and you've had a couple ma magazine articles and your your Twitter followers go up, all of a sudden you're too cool for for, for the school of basketball. But not Tyler Ennis. So for me. Uh, all the best to him, man. He's he's gonna he's gonna do well. Yeah. I know you've heard enough about Tyler Ennis because the Syracuse boy Leo just. Keeps <laughs> well, about it. just remember there is also a top point guard prospect out of Australia named Dante Exum. Yes. But you take Exum, Ennis, and Smart. You have three point guards. I think they're ready to start for any NBA team, and I have no problem putting Ennis in that category. Okay. Quickly, I wanted to throw something at you guys. Recently, um, Andrew Bennett was quoted as saying that he is willing to do a stint in the D-League. We just saw the Boston Celtics send Rajon Rondo down to the Red Claws for all of 88 minutes, but that's the first really superstar to go down to the D-League. Yeah. Not really. But are you open to seeing your boy? I'll start on this end. Are you open to seeing Andrew Wiggins kind of get his game back in the D-League? Can he Andrew go? Andrew Wiggins, you talking about Bennett. Sorry, Bennett. Yeah, yeah. Can he go back to UNLV? <laughs> uh, I just I thought he needed another year in college. I was I'm still shocked he was the number one pick, and maybe he's still going to become a really good player. But I I still think he needs a bit of work. Would have loved for him to stay in college. Going to the D League is the only option for him right now. He's got to go and get minutes quickly. T Rex, yes or no? Uh, uh sure. <laughs> I, I think he's going to be okay. This is why yeah. I say that. Oh, I, I know he's going to be okay. I think that there's a lot of the too much of the extras right now for him, which is clouding his game and, yeah. and you know impeding his progress, but he'll be fine. Quickly. What, Kwam, what, what was the worst draft, oh, number one draft pick of all time? It was Kwame. Was it, Olo Candy. Yeah, maybe, but. Olo, Olo, Brown. What, Kwame Brown had 10. Oh, he had a better career than Olo Candy. Yeah, but he's, but he's drafted like 10 points or whatever. He was averaging, what, what's Andrew got now? One? Averaging one point so a game? you're saying yes. Yeah, go okay. away, man. Go to Europe. <laughs> Yeah, that's what hey, I would say. All right. No, no, go to Europe, man. Go, and go to Europe somewhere. and play in a team with better coaching and really come back as a star. I don't. The D-League's right. fine, but if I'm him, I go to Europe and I come back in three years. You're getting the raw truth from your man, George Strombolopoulos, here on The Hangout. We will be back. We still have more to talk. We got to talk about the heat. We got to talk about Deion Waiters. This is The Hangout, Taylor's home for talking basketball.